What if events went differently? Imagine a galaxy where the symbiote known as Venom finds itself on the dark plains of Naboo, drawn to a creature as formidable as it is fractured, Darth Maul. As the fierce duel unfolds at the heart of Fee Palace, the tides turn unexpectedly, just as Obi-Wan Kenobi delivers the final blow. The alien symbiote finds a broken and fractured maul in the depths of Naboo. This unforeseen alliance would have major consequences in the Star Wars galaxy. It would change the beginning of the Clone Wars and everything else in between. Welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to another brand new and exciting Star Wars and Marvel crossover video. And in, in today's video, we're finally discussing what would happen in this tale of power, rage, and survival, as Maul is now more monster than man, and carves a new path through the stars not just driven by vengeance, but also with the Venom symbiote now on his side. Would Palpatine reconsider Maul as his apprentice, or would he keep going with having Count Dooku as his apprentice? Things would be very interesting, I think, in the Star Wars universe, if the Venom symbiote had bonded with Darth Maul after the events of Naboo. Now, I do want to say, this video was highly requested after I did that video with what if Anakin Skywalker had the Venom symbiote on Mustafar. Now we're diving into another territory, another storyline where we finally get to have even more fun with another Marvel and Star Wars crossover video. Now if you guys like these videos, I would highly recommend that you guys subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. But that being said, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, let's dive into another brand new video. In the climactic battle within the Theed Power Generator Complex, the air thrummed with the hum of lightsabers as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn faced the Sith assassin, Darth Maul. The metallic clangs of their weapons echoed through the vast, hollow chambers, each strike a deadly note in their lethal symphony. Qui-Gon's movements betrayed his fatigue, each parry a second slower, each dodge a bit less sharp, as Maul's relentless ferocity continued to press the advantage. Maul, his face a mask of focused aggression, beneath the crown of his horned head, wielded his double-bladed saber with a precision that was almost surgical. The red glow of his weapon illuminated his tattooed face with a sinister light as he spun, parried, and thrust at the Jedi Knights. The duel was a blur of motion, a dance of death teetering on the edge of the abyss that lay just steps away from their whirling melee. The fight took a tragic turn as Maul seized a fleeting opportunity, his lightsaber impaling Qui-Gon squarely in the torso. The Jedi Master's eyes widened in shock and pain as he collapsed, his saber clattering to the floor. Obi-Wan, his face twisted in anguish at the sight of his fallen master, screamed a primal shout of both grief and rage. With renewed vigor fueled by loss, Obi-Wan launched himself at Maul with a fury that startled even the Sith. Their blades clashed with increased ferocity. The young Jedi's blue lightsaber meeting Maul's red with sparks flying in intense bursts. In a swift and desperate sequence, Obi-Wan managed to sever Maul's weapon, cutting the double blade in half. Unrelenting, he pressed on, his emotions channeled through every strike and block. The fight culminated in a swift, decisive maneuver as Obi-Wan's lightsaber found its mark. With a powerful swing, he cut Darth Maul in half. 
The Sith's upper body fell, expression one of disbelief, tumbling down the seemingly endless reactor shaft. His scream was lost in the darkness as he descended rapidly, the light from the battle above fading into a pinpoint before disappearing entirely. Severely wounded and fueled by an undying hatred, Maul's consciousness clung desperately to life as he plummeted into the abyss. His body landed in the dank, unlit underbelly of Naboo, a dumping ground for the generator's waste. It was a place of darkness and forgotten things, where the refuse of technology and biology mingled in the shadows. Unbeknownst to the galaxy above, a small, alien symbiote had crashed on the planet days before, its presence unnoticed amidst the turmoil of the Trade Federation's invasion. Drawn by the dark energies pulsating through the planet's core, energies amplified by Maul's own connection to the dark side, the symbiote had been searching for a suitable host. It found Darth Maul, broken and brimming with rage and pain, a perfect vessel for its own survival and sinister capabilities. The symbiote slithered through the shadows, drawn to the fading life force of the Sith Lord. It enveloped him, seeping into his wounds, bonding with his biological remnants in an invasive yet symbiotic fusion. Maul felt an immediate surge of strength as the symbiote regenerated his lost halves, replacing them with a powerful alien form that responded to his mental commands. New limbs, dark and textured like the rest of the symbiote's form, formed beneath Maul's torso, granting him mobility far superior to his original legs. As the bond deepened, Maul's mind cleared, and his purpose realigned with a newfound clarity. He was not merely Darth Maul now, he was something more, something deadlier. In the depths of Naboo, hidden from all prying eyes, Maul trained with his new abilities. He adapted quickly, the symbiote enhancing his natural agility and strength, augmenting them with alien reflexes and capabilities. Each movement was a shadow, each attack a whisper of death. As Maul mastered his new form, his thoughts turned outward. The Jedi, the Sith, the galaxy that thought him dead, they would all soon know the terror he had become. But first, he needed to find his way back to civilization, back to those who had cast him aside. With the symbiote's power coursing through his veins, Maul was ready to reclaim his place in the cosmos, not just as a Sith, but as a harbinger of something far darker. Maul's re-emergence into the galaxy began under the cloak of night. Using the symbiote's unique abilities to meld into the shadows, he stowed away aboard a cargo ship leaving Naboo's orbit. Every moment spent in the cramped, dark underbelly of the vessel allowed him further mastery over his new form. The symbiote, reactive to his thoughts and emotions, seemed almost eager, feeding off his dark intent and hatred. As the ship docked on a remote space station, Maul slipped off unnoticed and quickly made his way to the underworld networks he was once familiar with. The galaxy had changed in his absence, but the undercurrents of fear and power remained the same. Information was still the currency of the shadows, and Maul used it to his advantage. He needed to find out what had transpired since his presumed death, particularly he sought news of Sidious and the state of the Sith. Through whispered rumors and shadowy dealings, Maul learned of Count Dooku's rise as Darth Tyranus. His master had wasted no time in replacing him, a betrayal that stoked the fires of Maul's rage even further. Yet alongside this betrayal, he sensed an opportunity. If Sidious had moved on so quickly, perhaps he underestimated what Maul had become. This underestimation would be Sidious's undoing. Maul decided it was time to confront his former master and this new apprentice. Using the dark side to cloak his presence, he boarded a transport headed for Coruscant, the heart of the Galactic Republic, 
and the hidden seat of Sith power. As he traveled, the symbiote adapted further to his desires, creating armor-like extensions and refining its responses to his combat needs. Upon arriving on Coruscant, Maul used the chaotic bustle of the capital to his advantage, moving unseen towards the coordinates he had extracted for a secretive meeting between Sidious and Dooku. As he neared, he felt the dark side swell around him, the symbiote reacting to the proximity of other powerful Sith. Maul found them in a secluded chamber deep within the industrial sectors of the planet where the dark side was palpable. Sidious and Dooku were deep in conversation, plotting the next moves in their grand scheme to overthrow the Republic. Maul did not hesitate. He burst into the room, his form a terrifying spectacle of dark energy and writhing symbiotic tendrils. Sidious turned, surprise registering on his face, only for a moment, before it was replaced by a sardonic smile. Maul, he said calmly, his voice betraying a hint of pleasure. You have returned, and I see you have evolved. Dooku, ever the poised Sith, ignited his lightsaber, the red blade casting a sinister glow. An unexpected resurrection, he remarked dryly. But if you think to challenge us, you are mistaken. Maul answered not with words, but with action. With speed granted by the symbiote, he launched at Dooku, his own lightsaber ignited and ready. The duel was intense and brief. Maul's movements, enhanced by the symbiote's power, were unlike anything Dooku had anticipated. In a swift, decisive motion, Maul overpowered the Count, the symbiote's tendrils ensnaring Dooku and ending his life before he could fully comprehend his opponent's newfound abilities. Sidious watched, his expression unreadable. When Maul turned to face him, lightsaber in hand, the Emperor's eyes glinted with dark interest. Impressive, Sidious declared. You have indeed grown powerful. Powerful enough to resume your place at my side, perhaps. Maul considered Sidious's offer, his mind racing with strategies. Joining Sidious could provide opportunities, but his goal was not to serve, it was to dominate and to avenge. As these thoughts swirled through his mind, the symbiote fed on his anger and ambition, pulsing with dark energy. Your offer, I accept, Maul finally said, knowing this alliance would be temporary. His true plan was to ascend beyond Sidious, to use the Sith Lord's reach to expand his own power, and to eventually supplant him. As the pact was struck, Maul stood beside Sidious, his figure shadowed by the dark tendrils of the symbiote. In his heart, the fires of revenge burned fiercely, not just against the Jedi, but against all who had wronged him. The galaxy would soon learn to fear not only the Sith, but the new horror that Darth Maul had become. A creature of the dark side and something far more ancient and terrifying. The galaxy teetered on the brink of the Clone Wars. Darth Maul, reborn and fused with the Venom symbiote, had maneuvered himself back into a position of power beside Darth Sidious. The galaxy believed Count Dooku, who had died at Maul's hand, was still the menacing figurehead of the Separatist movement. But in the shadows it was Maul who pulled the strings, his ambition growing with each passing day. The critical moment came during the first major confrontation of the Clone Wars on the arid world of Geonosis. Jedi Knights led by Obi-Wan Kenobi, alongside Anakin Skywalker, were drawn into a trap that culminated in a gladiatorial showdown in a massive arena. As the battle escalated, with Jedi fighting desperately against overwhelming numbers of battle droids, a new, terrifying participant revealed himself. Maul stepped into the arena, his presence immediately drawing the attention of every combatant. His appearance was a shock to all, especially Obi-Wan, who gasped in disbelief. Maul, you died on Naboo. 
The Sith, more monster than the man now, responded not with words, but with action. As droids surrounded the remaining Jedi, Maul advanced, his red lightsaber ignited and the symbiote's tendrils writhing around him menacingly. The crowd in the arena mixed with Geonosian spectators and high-ranking separatists watched in fascinated horror. Following the battle in the Geonosian arena, where the Jedi battled against droid forces, Maul, now more monster than Sith, leverages the distraction to lure Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker into a secluded area. This location, reminiscent of where Maul previously confronted Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan on Naboo, is heavy with dark memories, fueling Maul's rage and the symbiote's aggression. As the dust of the arena settles, Maul faces off against the Jedi duo. His combat style, erratic and vicious due to the symbiote's influence, proves to be a formidable challenge. He engages Obi-Wan directly, their blades locked in a deadly dance while the symbiote's tendrils fend off Anakin's attempts to intervene. Anakin, though powerful, is pushed back repeatedly, his frustration and anger mounting. In a swift harrowing moment, Maul seizes an opportunity. With a surge of dark energy amplified by the symbiote, he overpowers Obi-Wan, delivering a fatal blow. Obi-Wan's lightsaber clatters to the ground as he falls, his eyes meeting Anakin's one last time. A silent plea for his former apprentice to find his way back to the light. Anakin's scream of denial and rage pierces the air, his grief palpable. But before he can retaliate, Maul, using the symbiote's strength, ensnares Anakin in a cocoon of dark tendrils, rendering him unconscious. With his old nemesis defeated and Anakin captured, Maul retreats from the scene, leaving the Jedi to mourn and regroup. Maul delivers the unconscious Anakin to Palpatine, revealing his true identity as Darth Sidious. In the secrecy of his chambers, Sidious commends Maul for his loyalty and success. However, he views the symbiote with a mixture of fascination and desire, contemplating its potential to enhance his own power. Sidious reveals himself to Anakin as the Sith Lord, manipulating the young Jedi's grief and confusion. He feeds Anakin's darkest fears and ambitions, promising power beyond imagining and the ability to prevent the deaths of those he loves, a power he claims could have saved Obi-Wan. Betrayed and broken, Anakin succumbs to Sidious's manipulations. His transformation into Darth Vader begins not with a pledge in the Jedi Temple, but in the shadowy depths of a Sith lair where his grief and rage consume him. Sidious, sensing the completion of his most powerful apprentice's turn, plans the next phase of his grand scheme. With both Maul and Anakin under his influence, Sidious plots to extract the symbiote from Maul. He envisions using the symbiote to create an even more powerful being under his direct control. Unbeknownst to Maul, Sidious researched ancient Sith alchemy and dark science to find a way to transfer the symbiote safely. The Jedi Council reels from the loss of Obi-Wan Kenobi and the mysterious disappearance of Anakin Skywalker. Yoda and Mas Windu sense a deepening shadow over the galaxy, their fears compounded by the dark events unfolding. Meanwhile, Padme Amidala, heartbroken and alone, withdraws from her active political role, mourning her lost love and the increasing turmoil engulfing the Republic. As Sidious prepares his dark ritual to strip Maul of the symbiote, the galaxy stands on the brink of a new era of darkness. Anakin, now a Sith apprentice, begins his training under Sidious, unaware of the fate planned for Maul. On the fiery world of Mustafar, amidst rivers of molten lava and ash-filled skies, Darth Maul, empowered by the Venom symbiote, trained Darth Vader with relentless intensity. 
The harsh environment mirrored the ferocity of their combat, each clash of lightsabers casting eerie shadows against the jagged rocks. Maul's movements were enhanced, unpredictable, and vicious, making him a formidable mentor and an even greater threat. As they paused, Maul seized the opportunity to plant seeds of doubt about Emperor Palpatine's intentions. Sidious has plans within plans, Vader. Do you truly believe he will share his empire with us? Maul's voice was low, infused with a dangerous edge that the symbiote amplified. The young Vader remained silent, his mind racing. He had been molded by Palpatine, shaped into a weapon of the Sith. Yet Maul's words stirred a deep, unsettling suspicion within him. Later, alone in his quarters, Vader's solitude was interrupted by an unexpected visitation. The spectral forms of Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi appeared before him. Qui-Gon, exuding a serene calmness that contrasted sharply with the surrounding darkness, spoke gently. Anakin, there is still light within you. It is not too late to change the path you are on. Obi-Wan, his expression one of sorrow mixed with hope, added, The force is unbalanced, and you are needed to restore it. You must endure, learn, and when the moment is right, act against the darkness. The presence of his former mentors rekindled a flicker of the light side within Anakin. The conversation left him conflicted, yet enlightened a sliver of hope piercing his tormented psyche. Their words echoed in his mind as he meditated, the Force Ghost's guidance providing clarity and resolve. Meanwhile, Palpatine, ensconced in the shadows of his throne room on Coruscant, sensed the shifting allegiances of his apprentices. His eyes, yellowed with the corruption of the dark side, glinted with malevolence. It is time to accelerate our plans, he muttered to himself. Unbeknownst to Maul or Vader, Palpatine initiated the execution of a sinister strategy designed to ensure his absolute control. Palpatine subtly manipulated Maul, leaking fabricated intelligence about the Jedi and the Republic's military strategies. This information, designed to stoke Maul's ambition and paranoia, included hints of a powerful ultimate weapon and the imminent initiation of Order 66. Maul, driven by the desire for power and control, took the bait, believing he had uncovered a path to overthrow Sidious and claim the Empire as his own. Emboldened, Maul confronted Palpatine in his darkened throne room I know of the Death Star, of Order 66. I will not be a pawn in your game, Sidious, Maul declared, his voice a blend of rage and defiance. Palpatine rose, his form cloaked in shadow. My dear Maul, every move you make has been anticipated. You think you play the master, but you are but a piece on the chessboard, he said, his voice cold as the void of space. Maul, fueled by the symbiote and his own hubris, challenged Palpatine directly. Then it is time for a new game, Sidious, one where I make the rules. With that, Maul stormed from the throne room, his plan set in motion to rally the forces necessary to initiate his coup. As Maul departed, Palpatine's sinister smile returned. Yes, proceed, my apprentice. Set the stage for your own demise and my ultimate victory. With a flick of his wrist, he activated a hidden comm device. Prepare the extraction team. It's time to reclaim what is mine, he whispered. As Maul journeyed across the galaxy, gathering forces and forming allegiances with those who harbored resentment towards Palpatine's rule, he remained unaware of the Emperor's watchful eyes, tracking every move. The symbiote-infused Sith felt invincible, empowered not just by his formidable new abilities, but also by his belief in the righteousness of his cause. Back on Mustafar, Vader grappled with the haunting words of his former mentors. 
Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan's spectral visitations had stirred memories long suppressed, awakening a tumult of emotions. Anakin Skywalker, the Jedi Knight, seemed like a distant shadow of his current self. Darth Vader, Palpatine's enforcer. The seeds of doubt Maul had planted grew, watered by the Ghost Council, urging him to see through Palpatine's deception. Meanwhile, in the undercurrents of Coruscant, Palpatine meticulously orchestrated his master plan. He continued feeding Maul information, skewing the truth to keep him on a predetermined path. Palpatine's manipulation extended beyond Maul, subtly influencing the Galactic Senate and manipulating public opinion to further his own ends. As the clone armies grew in strength and the Jedi became increasingly stretched thin across the galaxy, the stage was set for Order 66. Maul, believing he had a window to strike, decided to make his move. He rallied his forces for a major offensive against the key planets that would cripple Palpatine's supply lines and leave Coruscant vulnerable. Back on Mustafar, as Maul prepared his armies, Vader's internal conflict reached its zenith. The dark side's allure battled with the growing resurgence of Anakin's former self. In a moment of clarity, he reached out through the Force, attempting to contact Padme Amidala. Their brief connection rekindled feelings of love and regret, strengthening his resolve to confront Palpatine. The clash came sooner than expected. As Maul launched his assault, Palpatine unveiled his countermove. He revealed to Vader the full extent of his manipulation, including his role in the tragedies of Anakin's life. The revelation shattered the last chains holding Vader to his Sith Master. Enraged and heartbroken, Vader vowed to end Palpatine's reign. The battles that ensued were catastrophic. Maul's forces, mixed with rogue elements and driven by the dark side's fury, clashed with the Republic's armies, which were secretly bolstered by Palpatine's loyalists. The galaxy was ablaze with war, a chaos that Palpatine had engineered to bring about the Jedi's downfall and to cement his absolute power. As Maul and Vader realized the extent of Palpatine's treachery, they joined forces, an uneasy alliance forged in the fires of betrayal. Together they confronted Palpatine in a monumental battle within the Senate Chamber, the heart of the Galactic Republic. The duel was fierce, Maul and Vader powered by rage and the dark side against Palpatine, the master manipulator and dark side adept. As the battle raged, the symbiote's influence on Maul intensified, pushing his abilities to new heights, but also making him reckless. Palpatine, ever the strategist, exploited this recklessness. He feigned weakness, drawing Maul into a trap that exposed him to a concentrated burst of force energy, temporarily weakening the symbiote's hold. In that moment, Palpatine struck, severely injuring Maul. Vader, witnessing the fall of his unlikely ally, tapped into a depth of power he had not known before, fueled by his anger, his love for Padme. And his desire for redemption, Vader pressed the attack, driving Palpatine back with a relentless assault. As the Senate chamber crumbled around them, reflecting the collapse of the Republic itself, Vader's blade found its mark, delivering a crippling blow to Palpatine. The Emperor, his plans unraveled, fell defeated, his grasp on the galaxy finally broken. Amid the smoldering ruins of the Senate chamber, where the decisive battle between Darth Vader, Darth Maul, and Emperor Palpatine had just concluded, Vader stood alone, grappling with the aftermath of his actions. The empire he had helped build was leaderless, the future uncertain, and his path forward shrouded in doubt. He sensed the weight of his choices. Each step he had taken down the dark path and wondered if redemption was still within his grasp.
Meanwhile, Darth Maul, injured but driven by a survival instinct, enhanced by the symbiote, retreated to the shadows. His mind raced with plans for recovery and revenge. Unknown to Vader, Maul had initiated a contingency plan during his earlier preparations for war. Far away on a remote, undisclosed planet, an army was being forged, not just of clones, but of beings bonded with symbiotes, like the one that had empowered Maul. This army, bred in secret, was designed to be utterly loyal and incredibly powerful, each soldier enhanced with the same ferocious strength and resilience that Maul possessed. As Maul reached his sanctuary, he activated a beacon that signaled his symbiote army to converge on Coruscant. The galaxy had never seen a force like this. Creatures of war driven by a hive mind, intent on destruction and domination. Maul's plan was no longer just about revenge against Palpatine or domination over Vader. It was about reshaping the galaxy in his image and under his rule. Back on Coruscant, as word of Palpatine's fall spread, chaos ensued. Systems began to declare their independence, while others pledged loyalty to the new power rising from the ashes of the Empire. In this turmoil, Vader realized the need for immediate action to prevent further disintegration of the galaxy. He sensed the approaching threat a dark wave of energy emanating from Maul's approaching forces. Preparing for the impending invasion, Vader called upon the remaining Loyalist forces and prepared the city's defenses. The invasion began under the cover of darkness. The skies over Coruscant darkened as the symbiote army descended, their forms a grotesque mirror of Maul's own terrifying appearance. The citizens of Coruscant watched in horror as these alien warriors began their assault, tearing through any resistance with brutal efficiency. Vader, leading the defense, found himself not just fighting for control of the Empire, but for the soul of the galaxy itself. As the battle raged, he tapped deeper into the Force than ever before, drawing on both the dark and the light sides to find balance within himself and in his tactics. He fought with a desperation born of a man who had lost everything but hoped to regain a fragment of his former nobility. During the chaos, the Force ghosts of Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan appeared to him again. They offered guidance and a reminder of the potential for good within him. Buoyed by their presence, Vader found new strength and led a counter-offensive that pushed the invaders back. The turning point came as Vader confronted Maul once again, this time amidst the ruins of the Jedi Temple. It was not just a battle of lightsabers, but of wills, as each warrior unleashed the full fury of their enhanced abilities. Vader, finally understanding the balance within the Force, used his knowledge to exploit a weakness in Maul's symbiote connection. With a powerful surge of Force energy, Vader disrupted the symbiotic bond, causing disarray in the ranks of the invading army. The hive mind connection shattered, and the symbiotes, now confused and pained, retreated from their hosts. The army collapsed, each soldier suddenly freed from the symbiote's influence but left weakened and disoriented. Maul, his plans unraveling rapidly, found himself alone and facing a resurgent Vader. In a final desperate clash, Vader defeated Maul, ending the threat of the symbiote army once and for all. With Maul's fall, Vader stood over him, not as a Sith Lord, but as Anakin Skywalker, a man who had finally brought balance to himself and offered peace to his adversary. As dawn broke over Coruscant, Anakin Skywalker, no longer Vader, looked out over the city. The battle was over, but the war for the soul of the galaxy would continue. He knew his journey was just beginning, a journey to mend the wounds he had caused, and to rebuild what had been lost. Around him, the Force ghosts of his past mentors faded with a final nod of approval, 
leaving Anakin to forge a new path, one of healing and redemption. And that is going to be it for what if Venom had saved Darth Maul on Naboo after Obi-Wan Kenobi had cut him down in The Phantom Menace. Now, it definitely would have been an interesting timeline. I think Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith would be completely changed. And with Maul having that extra power, that extra rage, because rage kept Maul alive in the original timeline. And now that he has the Venom symbiote, and now that it's feeding off of Maul's rage, with the dark side, I think you would definitely see another timeline, things would totally change, and I believe Palpatine would have really wanted the symbiote for his own purposes. I think he would have saw that Maul was more powerful than him with the symbiote, so him coming up with a plan to kind of take the symbiote from Maul, but also divert Maul into all these different things and make him run around while Palpatine finally, you know, enacts his plan. I think it was definitely interesting, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this Marvel and Star Wars crossover video, and if you guys do enjoy these videos, I would highly recommend that you guys click that big red subscribe button as it goes a very long way for the channel and the success of these videos. But again, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and have a wonderful day. Peace out.